Welcome back. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas survived the House impeachment vote for now. Wisconsin Congressman Mike Gallagher, California Congressman Tom Clinton, and Colorado Congressman Ken Buck all voted with the Democrats against impeaching Mayorkas. You tell Congressman Blake Moore was the fourth. He flipped his vote to no at the last minute, allowing the Republicans to vote again, possibly as soon as next week. Here's House Speaker Mike Johnson telling me last week how he's handling the slim Republican majority. Watch. The House Republican Conference is a small majority. Right now, literally, we have the smallest majority in U.S. history. We what have is it? One, one person? Vote mar one, one vote? One vote margin. Wow. Because uh, I have a couple folks out on health leave right now. Uh, but so we navigate that every day. We get everybody to work together. I'm here in New York because Mazi Pillip, we have this special election coming up in New York's third district. Uh, she's going to get that, that job done. It'll send a strong message to the Democrats that coming into this election cycle, we're feeling really bullish about the future. Joining me right now is New York Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congresswoman, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you, Marie. Always great to be on your show. I want you to weigh in on this debacle over the Senate deal. And I guess, you know, my big 30,000 feet question is, why did these senators think we wanted them to go back to, to you know, to scratch and, and to begin a whole new uh, debate on an immigration policy and jam some gargantuan policy into the schedule uh, during an election year when the Republicans were saying from day one that all you wanted was a secure border? Yeah, I think they need to go talk to the border agents and go to the border again, as, as you've done many times and, and just about every other member of Congress has done. Look, we know what the problem is. The problem is the cartels are running the border. And so much of this border bill does nothing more than enrich the cartels. And that means we're going to continue to use taxpayer dollars to fund sanctuary cities, to allow this bad behavior to continue in especially cities like New York and Chicago that are and these mayors are complaining that they've got migrants at their border are, are coming to their cities because they're getting benefits. Kathy Hochul keeps giving billions of dollars to continue to fund the cartels via these illegal immigrants. The human trafficking is making more money than even the, the dangerous fentanyl. And we're also funding their lawyers and we're giving them, you know, housing and phones and accommodations and food and health care and college tuition and all those things. And, and I think these senators need to go on the ground and understand the dangerousness of what's happening in our cities. You, just, you know, I, this has been shown over and over, but it needs to be shown every day. New York City police were attacked by migrants. And, uh, and finally, we're tracking them down. But with catch and release uh, being, ex you know, codified, uh, so many aspects of this bill, we're just wrongheaded and almost naive. It's almost like the senators haven't been on the ground or been to these regions where we are being overrun by these illegal immigrants who are hurting our communities, you know, hurting the taxpayers and really hurting our own relative wealth as we as we are in our uh, facing you know inflation and other difficulties our, our security which is why the executive branch needs to be held accountable which why yesterday was a disheartening vote that we as republicans didn't stick together our greatest strength and speaker johnson knows this as well as anyone is our unity and we did not have unity yesterday and we have a few people that decided that it was better to stand up with the Democrats instead of stand with us in unity and in impeaching Mayorkas and ultimately Joe Biden should be responsible for this as well. He has the power to today to shut our border down under 212F of the Immigration and Naturalization yeah. Act. Yeah, and, and yet the the rhetoric from Joe Biden is it's uh, not his fault. He needs power from Congress. He, he knew the border was not secure for 10 years. He's been saying it for 10 years, according to him. I mean, well, we know what he's really been saying. He's been saying that the border is secure and that the U.S. has operational control over the border, which is not true at all. But he's got his messaging underway. Amber, take that on. Jump right. in here. Uh, how are you going to respond to this? Because, I mean, we obviously know it's bogus, the idea that President Biden would put blame on Republicans. Republicans for the crisis if they refuse to vote for this bad bill. But the reality is that what's working against you is Republicans participated in the negotiation process. So uh, how do you separate yourself and the party from this debacle that came out of the Senate negotiations? Well, I think there's one thing that I learned my first term in Congress. Uh, and uh, people often said, it, you know, the enemy is not necessarily the Democrats across the aisle. The enemy is the uh, senators across the other side of the Capitol. And I, I mean, don't get me wrong, we have some phenomenal Republican senators, but just think if we had put together a deal 
similar to HR2, the hard work that Mike Johnson, our speaker, has done to identify the catastrophe, the American people see it. Joe Biden's numbers are in the tank. They know that, Joe, that President Trump and our policies, while President Trump was in office, did not cause this. This was directly caused by Joe Biden, his executive actions, and also the administrative actions under the leadership and lack of leadership of Secretary Mayorkas, which is why so many Republicans voted to impeach him, all but three, really, yesterday. Well, well, and I think I, when Steve Scalise comes back, yeah. we will impeach him. I, I mean, I don't understand some of your colleagues voting no on this. I mean, you know, we know the fentanyl is coming through the open border. We know women and girls are getting raped on their way here. We mm. know that the drug cartels are the ones deciding who gets in and who gets out. Do they not think he's had a dereliction of duty? They're, they're willing to have process. They don't like the process. That's their priority. They're willing to allow all of this to continue? I, I think that they somehow think that we are lowering the standard for impeachment, which I argue as a lawyer, and I've done constitutional law and constitutional cases in federal court, I don't think we're lowering the standard. This is one among the highest standards we've had. A guy who is serving in a cabinet position with arrogance, he has repeatedly lied to the American people yeah. in, in open hearings under the penalty of perjury, stating that our border is secure, that they are doing everything they can to, you know, to, to try to keep our border secure, right. when they knowingly allow all these people to come in, including dangerous people. I think, Maria, we need to emphasize dangerous people are coming right. into our country. And I mean, people in my, just in upstate New York, we've had an, a rape charge a sexual assault charge, a murder in upstate New York from illegal immigrants. This is a dangerous situation that is a powder keg. I would not like to see any of these three who voted against impeachment, and I, I think it's going to happen. They're yeah. going to see something terrible is going to happen, and their picture is going to be next to it. Yeah. And the, pe the American people, Republican or Democrat or Independent, are going to see this, well, I, and it's going to be harmful. I spoke they didn't to, stick together. They didn't stick with us. Crazy. I, I spoke to one of my sources the other day at the border, and he said, he said, one significant event, uh, event, we just arrested a cartel smuggling guide who smuggled illegal immigrants into Texas, and then we learned that uh, he's actually right now wanted for murder in Mexico, okay? And, and this is rippling through the, the country. Look at, look at what's going on in New York, okay? Uh, Mayor Eric Adams wants more money. He's asking the feds for more money from the state. He wants uh, the state to give the city more money to deal with this crisis. Albany recently agreed to send New York City $2.4 billion. Now Adam says he wants $4.6 billion. He says the $2.5 billion is not enough. The city is giving migrants about $350 a month to spend on food and baby supplies. Under the state's food stamp program, or SNAP, low-income New Yorkers are only eligible to receive about $291 a month. So, Congresswoman, look at this. The, the, the migrants who illegally came into this country and blew off our laws are actually getting more money than those who are below the poverty line right now, American citizens. Yeah, it's outrageous. And Maria, remember this. I can't emphasize it enough. When the report came out last fall that 85 percent of the people on the terror watch list came across the New York border and found their way to New York City in most cases, we know there are going to be terror cells and people who are going to do harm to the American people are coming across that border. Now is the time to shut down the border, not to have halfway measures or even you know worse measures that were codified or would be codified uh, by the Senate Republicans. Yep. And, and, you know, with Democrats, by the way, but it's time for us to stand strong as it, the Senate, every Republican in the Senate and every Republican in the House should be standing up to this disaster that the Biden administration has created on our on our on our, our domestic soil here. Yeah. It's really dangerous. We'll see. All right. Congresswoman, good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, former Speaker of the House.